every year. The world's favorite airline brings 24 million people together. When I joined the airline, British Airways had been advertising Club World to great effect, focusing on the business traveler, and we had built up a significant business by that uh, product and advertising mix. The next challenge for us after first class Club World is the economy cabin. Now, the economy cabin involves all the people who travel on British Airways, and so therefore we felt we needed advertising which pulled back and looked at the airline as a whole and presented the values of the airline, the warmth, the stature of our network internationally, and just all the people who provide the service as, a, as an underpinning and preparation for the economy relaunch. That's the reason for the advertising. We just hit upon an idea one day. It really just came out of the blue, just like that. I don't know where it came from. Um, it wasn't looking through books or magazines. It was just purely um, out of like, the higher echelons of the mind, I suppose. The real thing about this idea is when Graham Fink uh, came and showed me the storyboard, I just sort of knew in my gut, I thought, you know, this is unbelievable. I mean, it was such a kind of strong, big idea. So just emotionally, I kind of knew this is, on the scale of it, I knew it had the right feeling. It was unusual enough, you know, really dramatic, made me excited and, and scared stiff at the same time. So far, she it was in April 1989 yeah. that British Airways asked Saatchi and Saatchi to come up with a new global advertisement for the airline in the 1990s. At one time, more than 30 people in the creative department had tried to find the right idea. But eventually, just one idea seemed good enough to present to the airline. Marilyn Cox from Master Brand and Advertising and Derek Deer from Brands Marketing were the first people at British Airways to see it. A whole load of swimmers, and they're all kind of different races, ages, sexes, but the one thing they have in common is they're all wearing red bathing caps, and we actually see them swimming through the water. Bear with us. <laughs> um, we then actually, you know, maybe go in on one of those and we'll see in detail uh, one of the guys swimming with, with, with a red hat on. And we might even go closer in still mm. to see his pair of lips. And what we do then is pull out to see that all these swimmers are in fact, as a group, making the shape of a pair of lips. So what we lips do then is pull was only the first the shape the commercial needed. Together. And with an oh, eye, an ear shape. and a face to come, the cast was already into the thousands. Finally, the face changes to the globe. Well, we said we wanted a big idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it obviously raises a huge number of questions, as you will imagine. Yeah. But it certainly is a big idea. Um, from my point of view, I guess the number one issue is, you know, to what extent are we involving huge numbers of people? And maybe in all of that, to what extent does it feature our own people? Because that's kind of critical for us as well, mm. if we can manage it. The idea of actually using people as the technique mm. to, to show images of people coming together is, mm. um, I think that's the, this is the closest, as far as I'm concerned, that we've ever got to something that might actually work globally. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, it really is a sort of symbol of British Airways helping people make those relationships. Mm. Graham and Jeremy, we've already talked to a couple of directors. Um, I mean, just to get an initial response as to the feasibility and, and how they might approach it. The guy that they are most keen on as a result of those conversations is Hugh Hudson, who, you know, you probably know of, of Chariots of Fire and Fame, but also obviously has done a lot of, of commercial. I mean, he seems to have a sense of dramatic visual images. Mm. What kind of music would we... I mean, in the past, we've used rather classical music, yeah. and that's not going to be appropriate on this kind of execution. Mm. And I mean, have you had any thoughts? We have had some thoughts about using the LACME track, the Delibes LACME music, and actually updating it by doing a treatment of it. 
And in fact, I don't know whether you're familiar with Malcolm McLaren's treatments of operatic tracks, what he did with Madame Butterfly. And in fact, he's oh, produced a whole oh, yeah. album of doing the same things to um, well-known operas. We have thought of approaching him. Well, the, the, we know that, that nowadays, with so much advertising, and so many ways in which advertising can get to the general public that you need something that really is going to be dramatic. It's going to reach out and grab people. Otherwise, frankly, you're wasting your money. And we wanted a big idea, a dramatic idea, and we felt that this concept, highly visual in nature, which really can be used across the world, which sells the authority of, of British Airways and really yet combines that authority with, with what we think is a very human story about people, would be very effective for the business. After an enthusiastic reception of the idea, it still took a further six months to arrange casting, plan for the vast crowd scenes, and regular locations. In October, the commercial was ready to be shot in America. Action, everyone! Go, Judy, go! Move, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And move, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Move, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. First of all, we have nine days consecutive shooting in five locations. So as far as things that go wrong, if you get behind schedule, and some days you have a couple of thousand people showing up. So to get behind schedule, it's not a simple thing of, well, we'll go the next day, because we're accessing schools, we're accessing kids, kids are you know, schools are closing down for the day so that they can come and join us for a great day out. Hopefully, everyone on the day will decide not to play hooky. My name is Art, and I'm one of the assistant choreographers. If you look right across the way, there's a beach, and that's where we're going to be shooting. You're going to be transported over there tomorrow. Okay? So, when you arrive tomorrow morning, you will be dropped off right here. Right alongside the... The, uh, the first day on location was a rehearsal day for the 330 crowd for Lips. For choreographer Judy Chabola, Arizona was a long way from the previous spectacles she had arranged at the Los Angeles Olympics and the Super Bowl. While the lips were testing the water, the opening shot of the commercial was being set up under the expert eye of the director, Five, Hugh Hudson. Six, seven, eight, and move. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Move it. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. I actually use a football grid chart to mark it out. In each formation I use, I developed a slightly different system for it based on alphabets and numbers. So I've put them in numerical order, and then it's just cross-reference points to try and keep track of where they are and who needs to move where. Okay, not bad. The very, very back. Gentlemen, pull into your right a little. The, very, the bottom back, guys, without their shirts on. Great, great. Well, I brought over all the cones, set those out, uh, C-stands, grid, grid numbers. All the rope uh, setup was down there, PA system, generators. We buried about, uh, I suppose, 800 to 1,000 feet of cable. And just generally got it ready for Hugh to be able to fly around and not see everything. <sighs> Malcolm, the beach is clear. After a day's drive, the next location was Moab, background for many a famous western in Hollywood's heyday. This was the setting for the next two days, and the biggest crowd scene. Together with over a hundred of the principal cast and background actors, who would give the commercial its international look. If you pop it in there, and that'd be quite safe on there, okay? Ready. 
Cut it! Time's too far back. Okay. Okay. Great. Get the pilots in there earlier so they're not so far back. It's more like a feature than it is commercial. I mean, it's like doing any number of films I've done with Thaz Grazzi. I mean, the only different thing about this, of course, we've had such a particular color um, control. We had to use the same red and the same blue and white, which and make it look real, which is um, not easy because men don't really, businessmen don't really wear scarlet suits. <laughs> And cut it! Very good. One more, everyone. You'll ask them, you know, which way is the exit in the bu tour buses from the airport, okay? You ask the middle gentleman here. Where is he coming from? He's kind of getting off the airplane. Now I see that back to back here. And they know they meet and hug here and turn. We are structuring it much more like a feature film, that there are departments that look after specific pieces of wardrobe and a department that just looks after transport and a department that just looks after props. All of these departments have to interface and come together at the moment we want them. And we're moving around, as you know. We've got um, a number of different locations. All of them are difficult. And bear in mind, we've been rehearsing with these people for four weeks beforehand, pulling them together, and yeah, it's been a pretty big exercise. And we have to feed them and water them and put them up and take them back again and all those sorts of things, yeah. The helicopter, almost a star in its own right, was fitted with a special gyro-stabilized camera for the all-important aerial shots to compensate for vibration and sudden movements. The crowd scene for the face and globe involved almost 1,500 schoolchildren, and it posed a few problems for both the director and choreographer. It's when they start changing their positions and they start throwing, you know, lines off, or the, especially like the outer edge doesn't become totally circular. So those little things, and then the eye starts to square up again because they're used to it being in these very linear lines, and now we're starting to try to get them to curve. So each time, you know, we get those a little cleaner, a little better. It's very kinky there, that nose. The eyes are still square. We couldn't get them. Un we can't get them unsquared. Just... All of the people are in lines, and what we've sort of just seen on the, the video playbacks is if, if you come off the the the, um, the vertical, you come about 15 degrees off. It does actually look much better. And obviously, the, the further away you get from the the face, the less you see little holes where people are moving or, or are absent or whatever. Terribly kind of worrying on the ground when you can't see what's going on and uh, you just hear garbled radio talk at the time. And smile! And wink! And the change! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine! Bend over with your arms at your side! One of the main advantages of shooting in Utah was the special location assistance given by the Utah Film Commission. This meant, for an entire Sunday, two main streets in the center of Salt Lake City could be completely cordoned off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Move, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It was an event that did not go unnoticed. British Airways is filming a television commercial in several locations in Utah, and viewers all over the world will see the finished product. News specialist Janie Clayson has the story. British Airways is turning some Utah high school students into international stars. These kids have been practicing their routine since 7 o'clock this morning, but by the time this commercial is finished, more than 5,000 high school kids from across Utah can claim stardom. Baby, step it, baby. The rehearsal time with the students has been incredibly uh, productive and uh, extremely exciting for some of the students, particularly our rural students and our Indian students that would not have ever had an opportunity to do something like this. Teachers have felt that it's been an, a wonderful learning experience for the students. 
The superintendents have been very thrilled. They called my office almost on a daily basis the last week about how exciting it has been and what a great opportunity it has been for their students. And stop right there. Well, I believe that the students feel like this kind of thing can be done in a day or in an hour. Can you line yourselves up? I think the students have been amazed at how much work is involved. Okay, everyone line up. Here we go. Arms down. Celia, pull into the left. Okay, the back end of the eye. We try and get our nice V form. Standing by, ready to go. Everyone facing front. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Move. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bonneville Salt Flats are usually the setting for land speed records, but on this occasion, a fleet of special buses from schools up to four hours' drive away ferried a rather different team onto the salt. Okay, you need to have that on so that we know what color you are. We've got about a thousand kids out here that were dressing up in red and blue and black clothes to do our Picasso face. Okay, and action! The salt flats were physically demanding for the cast and crew. In summer, it can reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit. But in October, a strong wind kept the temperature down. Nevertheless, the combination of wind, sunlight and salt all day was still hard work. Well, I think it's a great uh, idea for our students to be involved. They're constantly exposed to advertising through the media, uh, especially commercials and television. And uh, today gives them an opportunity to be a part of that. And this location was our last choice because we really wanted to be up in the, in the mountains where it was, looked much more alpine than this. We get snow-capped mountains. We had to come here because the Utah uh, deer season opened and, uh, and people are now just shooting, you know, they're shooting their 10, 10 days of madness up in these hills where they're, they all, thousands of people are shooting guns at, in every direction. So we've come down here into the safety where we could uh, film with safety with all these kids. We'll be able to release them after the next few shots. The top of the ear needs to pull in a little tighter to the rest of the ear. It looks good. You can have the top go back. Hugh Hudson, our director. How about a big hand? And of course, at the end of the day, there was still the raffle for a free trip to London to reward at least some of the children who had worked so hard all day. 
well, we made it work. So I feel there's a sense of achievement because uh, we'd produced it in within the eight days. We didn't overrun. Uh, we produced it pretty well within the financial uh, allocation. So there's that sense of achievement. Uh, visually, it looks like the storyboards. So I suppose it's, uh, it's worked. How people will receive it, that's a different issue. 14 million pounds will be spent on airtime to show the commercial in over 32 countries. And it was a fitting tribute to the immense effort that the commercial picked up two of the highest awards in the UK advertising industry at this year's Golden Break ceremony. That of Best Photography and Best Director.